Hello people, in this video, let us look at what uh, coronaviruses are, okay? So basically, at, uh, at a medical student level, some information is available in the textbook. Now with the outbreak, let us look at the details from the textbook, okay? So basically, coronavirus has earlier already caused a lot of such outbreaks, okay? So in uh, 2003, in China itself, there was SARS coronavirus, okay? That was severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus okay so basically this was in china in 2003 so basically there was there were 774 deaths okay so this led to 774 deaths okay and uh, what were the symptoms of the sars so lower respiratory tract infection severe okay then muscle pain headache fever sore throat etc okay it was, uh, these symptoms were then followed by cough, dyspnea, pneumonia, etc. So, 774 deaths happened in 2003. In 2012, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. So, basically in 2012, in, first reported in Saudi Arabia, this was another outbreak. In this, the mortality rate was 30%, okay. So, you can guess by the name Middle East means they thought that it, they, uh, it is believed to have been acquired this virus from camels and bats. When it comes to SARS, they believed that it came from monkeys, contracted from uh, animals including monkeys, okay. Like civet, uh, palm civets, Himalayan palm civets, raccoon dogs, cats, dogs, rodents. Now, this MERS coronavirus basically, in this what were the clinical manifestations? Severe acute respiratory symptoms, fever, cough, shortness of breath, right? Diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, kidney failure, all this happened in MERS. Now they are calling it as Wuhan Coronavirus 2019 NCOV, Novel Coronavirus. Now let's move on to the microbiology of the coronaviruses, okay? So basically this is under the family Coronaviridae. These are uh, uh, RNA viruses. They contain RNA as the genetic material. They have single strand RNA, which is positive sense. These viruses have envelope. They have helical symmetry. And under electron microscope, they look like petal shaped peplomeres. So this is the identification. Okay. So petal or club shaped peplomeres. So what do these produce? Respiratory infection. So, these peplomeres can also be, they can be called as crown shaped peplomeres, giving an appearance like solar corona. Hence, they are called as coronavirus, okay. So, basically, there can be man to man transmission of coronavirus. Now, let us look at the transmission of coronavirus, the lab diagnosis of coronavirus and the treatment of coronavirus. Three topics we will look at, okay. So, these are all microbiology topics. So, they spread by coughing, sneezing, Personal contact, touching mouth, nose, eyes, shaking hands, right? So, all these can be modes of transmission. SARS coronavirus spread, uh, also spreads via droplets and through air. Airborne spread also can happen, okay? Now, let's move on to the lab diagnosis of coronavirus. So, basically, let us say you are supposed to report and say whether a person is positive or negative for coronavirus. How will you do it? So, you will do... Typical stuff, antigen detection, antibody detection under the electron microscope, you already saw how it looks. RNA detection, because it is an RNA virus, you will detect the RNA and if you are able to detect it, you can report isolation <coughs> of the virus. Let us look at how this is done, okay. First of all, antigen detection. Coronavirus antigens in the respiratory epithelial cells, you can detect using ELISA, right. Using specific monoclonal antibody. So, you should have the antibody so that you can detect the antigen of the coronavirus. So, you should have the specific monoclonal antibody of the coronavirus, remember. Then, electron microscopy. So, you can detect using electron microscopy. You already saw how it looks, right? All the petal shape, peplomere, etc. If it is enteric coronavirus, that is, it causes some diarrhea, then from the stool, you can detect an electron microscopy, okay? From stool, in case of enteric coronavirus, okay? If it is enteric coronavirus. So, you can, you have understood now, not just it causes a respiratory disorder, it can cause diarrhea also. As it is RNA virus, you will do reverse transcriptase PCR assay. So, you will try to detect the coronavirus RNA in the respiratory secretions and even the stool samples, you will try to detect the RNA, okay. And if it is SARS virus, you can also detect from blood. So, look at this. 
you can detect from respiratory secretions you can detect from stool if it is enteric coronavirus and if it is sars you can even detect from blood the rna of the virus okay then coming to isolation so basically tracheal ring culture right it's not used anymore this was uh, what you studied earlier tracheal ring culture is no longer used basically cell culture is very difficult for coronavirus okay sars was isolated from respiratory specimens using vero cell line okay so vero cell line they used for sars earlier they used earlier they used tracheal ring okay now they are using vero cell line okay then serum antibody detection so now in the patient's blood can you find the antibody to the virus that's all so here you try to find the virus antigen itself to this antigen is there any antibody in the patient's blood that you will detect in the serum antibody detection again here you are talking about elisa that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay okay you can also use hemagglutination inhibition test and rising titer of antibody right you have always heard this rising titer of antibodies between the acute and convalescent sera can be used to establish the diagnosis so rising titer will be important to establish the diagnosis okay so lastly we will cover uh, the treatment and uh, prevention okay of uh, coronavirus let's just complete this with treatment and prevention okay according to the textbook of microbiology latest available what they say is there is there are no specific drugs or vaccine available to treat the infection okay so uh, basically only symptomatic treatment will be given so as there is no treatment let us look at the control measures isolation of patients isolation isolation of patients yeah quarantine exposed people so basically isolation is somebody who is uh, you know showing the symptoms quarantine is people who are exposed just quarantine them travel restrictions okay travel restrictions have to be put then you will use gloves uh, gowns goggles respirators right for the healthcare workers frequent hand wash okay frequent hand washing will help avoid personal contact like kissing sharing uh, utensils uh, uh, cups etc with sick people okay avoid contact with these animals uh, like camels etc don't drink um, uncooked camel milk meat etc then all these control measures were the most effective methods for uh, preventing sars transmission in 2003 so probably the same thing will work even today so control measures important okay let us take a recap of what we have seen in uh, corona virus corona virus basically it is a rna virus it has envelope it has helical symmetry it uh, is transmitted by cough sneezing right by air so how will you do lab diagnosis you will detect the antigen you will detect the antibody you will try to isolate the virus you will detect the rna of the virus and you can also try to see the virus under electron microscope then how to uh, treat it as such there is no specific treatment only symptomatic treatment prevention will have these control measures basically isolation quarantine travel restrictions use of uh, you know uh, gloves gowns goggles respiratory uh, respirators by healthcare workers frequent hand washing avoid personal contact like kissing sharing utensils cups etc avoid contact with animals like camels don't take uncooked camel milk meat right etc so hope you stay safe from coronavirus bye bye